Curtis. It's Ms. Messer, your friendly neighborhood art teacher. Today I'm here to put you through part of my Drawing Boot Camp series. Drawing Boot Camp teaches you skills that will help build your drawing muscles. Today, the skill we're going to focus on is learning to shade a sphere. Before we get started, let's talk about some vocab that will help us during this lesson. First is 2D, which just means flat. Drawings are considered 2D artwork. Our next word is form, and that is a 3D shape. A 3D circle is a sphere. Value is the lightness or darkness of a color. This is going to be very important when we start shading. Next is light source. Light source is wherever the light is coming from. This might be from a lamp, a window, or even the sun. The cast shadow is the shadow underneath a form. And last on our list is hatching and cross-hatching, which are styles of shading. All you will need for this project is a pencil, an eraser, a piece of paper, and something to trace a circle with. Once you have those supplies, you can carefully trace around your circle. The next thing you'll want to do is draw your light source above and to the right of your sphere. It's also a good idea to be looking at a sphere, so I pulled up a picture of one from the internet that I can refer to. Next, you'll make three very light rings inside of your original circle. Watch how I place them and how lightly I'm sketching them. You'll also place a light oval underneath your sphere. This is your cast shadow and it comes from the light source above. Now let's think through how we can add value. If my light is shining above and to the right of my sphere, that first ring is going to be the lightest part. Then as I move down from the round side of my sphere, the light is farther away so my sphere is getting darker. Start with the darkest parts by using hatching that follows the round shape of the sphere. This will give it a more realistic look. Watch as I shade my darkest value first. As you move up closer to your light source, get to a more medium value. You don't want your sphere to look like it has stripes though. So it's important to blend the dark and medium value together. Put your pencil in the darker value and shade out from there, pressing lighter as you go up to achieve a more medium value. Continue to shade with hatching following the round shape of the sphere. Watch as I get closer to the light source. I'm getting lighter and lighter with my pencil until I get to that first ring, the one closest to the light source. That's the only part I'm gonna leave completely white. That's the highlight on my sphere and it is the brightest part. But I still wanna make sure it's blended and not stripy. You might have noticed that the bottom of the sphere I'm looking at, there's a small slice of lighter value. This is because there is a little reflection of light from the table that hits the bottom of the sphere and causes it to be a little lighter. Shading that little slice makes a big difference in making the sphere look more realistic. Watch as I finish shading and blending, even using my eraser as a tool to smooth out my sphere. Lastly is the cast shadow. If you look at the sphere on the left, notice that even in the shadow, there are different values. The darkest value is directly under the sphere. The further from the sphere, the lighter the cast shadow becomes. So I'm gonna make sure that my drawing reflects that too. Watch how I put the finishing touches on my sphere. Let's reflect back to make sure I have all the things I need on my sphere. First, I'm making a 2D artwork of a form or a 3D shape. I used value to show dark, medium, and light parts on my sphere. I have a light source helping to show where my lightest parts are. Underneath my sphere, I have a cast shadow, and I used hatching and cross-hatching to achieve my shading. 
This is a challenging exercise, but I didn't give up. I learned a lot and I did a nice job and I feel proud of the work that I made. I can't wait to see what you make.